own take advantage of the Beldum being in play and sniping them with the Radiant Greninja's oh, robots. The prize cards, two of the Beldum, Beldum, very afraid of the Radiant Greninja, deciding to live in the prize cards now. Wow, honestly, awkward prizes for both of these players. Andrew Mahone prizing three basic water energy. Andrew Hedrick prizing three prizing three basic metal energy, two Beldum for the prizes for Hedrick, and then two superior energy retrieval for Andrew Mahone. Oh, it's already looking a little awkward here. It is looking a little awkward along with those two superior energy retrievals. And now I wanted to point out how you mentioned that uh, Mahone was the innovator of the Raiden archetype, and Chenpo has been dubbed the Blue Raiden as well. So <laughs> really cool <laughs> to see how he can follow this up and see what he can do. Well, here we go. Top eight underway, Masters Division, Andrew Hedrick versus Andrew Mahone. And it will be Mahone kicking things off, starting with that Qian Pao EX, immediately grabbing the deck to search with that Shivery Chill ability, allowing him to add two basic water energy from the deck to the hand. We'll see what else Andrew Mahone has to follow this turn up. I did see another Frigibax in the hand, so that will be nice to put that into play. One in the deck, one in the prize cards. He's got the Ultra Ball and actually a Nest Ball as well. Going to be an interesting call here, though. Do you go for the Bidoof? Do you go for the Radiant Greninja? I think you have to go for the Radiant Greninja because your hand's just not that great overall. And having extra cards gives you a chance at finding those Frigibaxes, more Bidoofs, the Body Body Puffin, and everything else you might want to have. So, yeah, a little underwhelming start here for Andrew Mahone does go for the Greninja of the Nest Ball. Big two cards here from Concealed Cards. We will see Andrew Mahone as well use that Earthen Vessel, searching the deck for two basic energy cards at the cost of discarding a card from the hand. No big deal to lose that basic water energy. Of course, plenty of access with a few superior energy retrieval. It is worth noting as well, two in the prize cards. That could definitely be a factor here, but this Earthen Vessel can get two energies from the deck. Looks like basic lightning energy be will be one of the choices. That can be one of the problems with Chien Pao. How can you find your basic lightning energy? Andrew's able to do it pretty early here. We'll probably discard it with concealed cards. And now we'll have access to that through superior energy retrieval through the game if he wants to work in an Iron Hands attack at some point. Now, I think Andrew might have not initially checked how many energies were prized, but he then did a double take to his discard pile, like, wait, how many energies am I down? <laughs> because he had to uh, really dig through and decide which energies to choose here. So I think very aware that now there's three energies in the prize cards, which he definitely has enough to work with at this point in time, but it is something that could affect the gameplay here. Concealed cards from Radiant Greninja will discard a Lightning Energy, drawing two more cards. Andrew Mahone is able to find the Rare Candy, one of those old-school Rare Candies, I believe, from that EX Holon Phantoms expansion. Already has Backscalibur in hand, and I think is going to look to establish a Bidoof into play, more than likely. That is going to be the debate with this Ultra Ball play. Yep, and very important to get that into play as soon as you can now. Also was debating whether to keep the energy or discard the Chien Pao. Decided on the energy, which uh, it feels good, right, under normal circumstances, but with two superior energy prized and so many energies prized, this could prove to be a little yeah. costly. Yeah, it definitely could be. I will say superior energy retrieval might not be the first thing you think to uh, check for with the First deck search, you know, it is a pretty important card here for Chien Pao, but it might not be your initial feeling is uh, how many superior energy retrieval are in the prize cards. So it might not be something Andrew's totally aware of. We'll see as the game develops, though, how things end up happening. Andrew has a pretty solid board here and will just be content to pass. No energy attachment for turn. I think wanting to keep the energy in hand hanging around for concealed cards. Now Andrew Hedrick is going to kick off his turn playing a Nest Ball able to search his deck for any basic Pokemon to put it directly onto the bench. Beldum, Origin Form, Dialga V, Mew EX, and Radiant Greninja will be the choices for him to debate between. No, Andrew's gonna find out the bad news that two Beldums are hiding in the prize cards, and if he does decide or is able to bench the other one, there is a possibility of Radiant Greninja sniping both of them immediately as there is no mana fee in the deck list to protect them. So. I really do think it's going to be a Dialga, but we did see Andrew lose to Eddie North earlier to Qian Bao, and 
the start so far isn't looking too, too great for Andrew here. Yeah, we've definitely seen some slower starts from Andrew Hedrick on the stream today compared to what we saw from him in day number one, where it seemed like it was just firing on all cylinders with his Dialga deck. Taking a moment to note the prize cards, a pair of Beldum hiding away for now, a bunch of energy cards as well, not available at the moment. Nest Ball here having a few options. Depends on the strength of Hedrick's hand, but Radiant Greninja could be the best choice if he just needs a few more options. Yep. Now it is C going to be the Beldum, though, right. so at risk Ooh. now. Thinking about it. Oh, all right. Yeah, potentially changing his mind at this point in time. It's going to be the Dialga, it looks like. All right. Main attacker, main star of the deck. I wonder what made him hesitate and change his mind at this point. Yeah, it definitely depends what else is in the hand. Does it, Hedrick have a supporter available? Will we see an Iono, a research, something along those lines to find him something else to work with? Many questions that we'll be looking for the answers to as this turn continues to develop here. Now, Andrew's, Andrew Mahone's hand, I keep saying Andrew, but Andrew Let's Mahone's just go with the hand. last names, yeah. you know. These, <laughs> these guys are both pretty well known by their last names as well. So. Ma Mahone's hand is actually incredibly good. It has an energy, has rare candy back Excalibur, and has Prime Catcher. So this Iono by Hedrick will be very important as it will take away that fantastic hand. I do think that the supporter option for Hedrick is going to be Iono more than yep. likely. He does have Poke Gear, so could dig for a research if he wanted, but didn't want to potentially discard all those cards hanging around in hand. Will just be the Iono, which will put Mahone's powerful hands to the bottom of the deck. And this is the situation why it feels really nice as Mahone to have gotten the Bidoof down. It opens up a lot more plays for you on your second turn. Looking at the cards drawn here for Hedrick, was able to find a Nest Ball that can grab the second Beldum. And is this a situation for Hedrick where you've just got to put the second Beldum in play? And hope. And hope, yeah. And just force mm -hmm. Mahone to have it. I mean, it's not a guarantee, right? I right. mean, Mahone it's would have to retreat the Chien Pao plus get energies onto the Radiant Greninja. Uh, you know, you could theoretically, as Hedrick, play around this, only put one Beldum in play so your opponent doesn't get two prize cards from Moonlight Shuriken ever in one turn. But it's not a guarantee that Mahone could pull off the Moonlight Shuriken. He's going to force him to have it. Yeah, force him to have it. And also very important to consider that if you're not using Metal Maker, you're never going to get to that Star Chronos in time, right? So very important for you to not be uh, fully afraid of what your opponent can do. And sometimes you just have to take the risk that they will not have it. Now, Andrew Mahone does have a fresh new six-card hand, does already have the Urda. So it might not be too many pieces that he's missing at this point in order to accomplish this. As we see the Bibrel hit the board immediately, Chip. Immediately evolving from that Bidoof, Industrious Incisors will be a play available. We do see Pokestop going into play as well. Buddy Buddy Poffin could grab a couple Frigibacks out. We could see one Frigibax and then benching of the Bidoof in the hand currently. It's going to put a pretty big strain on Andrew's energy cards here and his resources to pull off this attack, I will say. It will, but I think the payoff is too great to not try it, you know? Like, one superior energy retrieval, and you know, like, if you take two prizes, you're also very likely to find some good prizes, right? Energy, superior energy retrieval. So I think it's worth it, because you do need to access those cards at some point. Yeah, just thinking through the sequence here... A lot of times you want to try to maximize by going for your Bibarel before playing your supporter for turn. Yep. But for Andrew to do that, it would come at the cost of Ultra Ball discarding a Bidoof and a Super Rod. He's actually going to use Shivery Chill first. Maybe we'll discard some energies with this. And also has Pokestop to work into the mix potentially. Yeah. Yeah. So Maho needs four key pieces. Needs Rare Candy, needs Max Caliber. Needs the Prime Catcher to potentially switch, or just these two energies and the Superior Energy Tribal. He can search for one of the two item cards with Irida. He can also grab the Vice Calibre with Irida, but he needs Pokestop to find him one of the item cards yeah. that he needs so it can go search for the other one with Irida. And I think that's what he's trying to piece out right now. How do you combine the Pokestop with the Bibarel, with the Greninja draw, to really maximize your chances and see as many cards as possible before you commit the Irida at this point. And I think this is why this deck, Champau of Excalibur, is a deceptively difficult deck to play. <laughs> it may yeah. seem straightforward, dump energy cards into play, but 
the difference between these sequencing decisions could be the differentiating factor between getting a knockout and not. Yep. Now, that nest ball does open up a potential Iron Hands play to knock out the Beldum for two prizes, which is also a way which Andrew Mahone can get ahead with the, in the two prize uh, trade off. But it doesn't seem like he's even going to consider it at this point in time. He's just going to grab the Excalibur right here, then probably draw cards with Bibrel, then draw with the Pokestop, and then finally use that Irida for the missing piece. He's actually not even going to grab the Excalibur. We'll just be benching the Badoo, yeah. failing the Ultra Ball, probably going for the Industrious Incisors first, and hoping off of the Bibrel off the Pokestop to find one of the two pieces that he needs, either the Rare Candy or Superior. The Prime Catcher doesn't even have to necessarily work into the mix here. He's got everything he needs if he can just find Superior Rare Candy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <sighs> I really wish we had seen the Iron Hands right there, though. I think that would have opened well, I think up so many avenues for I Mahone. Think like, as Mahone, fully committed. Though, yeah, I mean, as Mahone, though, I think you really want to take out... I mean, if you're pulling off Iron Hands, that means you probably have the cards to pull off the Greninja, right? And I think pulling off the Greninja seems a bit stronger. Taking out both the Beldums, setting Hedrick back so far, seems pretty strong to me. Look at the cards drawn here, though. It looks like that Cypher Maniac's code breaking. That doesn't quite work. Nope. We're it, in the same spot, right? He's going to have to hit one off the Pokestop right now. Yep. Needs to find Superior Energy Retrieval or Ooh. Rare Candy, and he doesn't. Nope. Not available. Uh, no. There's no I don't think he can do cards. it. No. There's no more way to draw cards. You cannot play that Cypher Maniac. If you could draw the cards from the Cypher Maniac and Ultra Wolf for the... Uh, by Excalibur, you'd still be a few cards short to discard for the Superior Energy Retrieval. So, seems like Mahone will not be able to piece this together and will only be able to potentially knock out the... Can he even get a knockout this turn? I don't think he can. I, yeah, I don't think he can. He's got no energy available in the deck. He's got no Superior Energy Retrieval access at the moment. We're just going to see Ultra Ball for Baxcalibur. And then the Irida, Rare Candy can put it into play. It might not even be worth putting it into play if you're, yeah. uh, if, uh, you're not going to be using that super cold ability. I have to wonder if it was worth it to draw the two cards with a Greninja instead of just holding on to that energy to guarantee at the very least a knockout. And it was also necessary to potentially retreat. Uh, if Andrew Mahone had also grabbed the Baxcalibur off of the Ultra Ball, after he drew with Bibrel, he could have put the Rare Candy and the Superior Energy Retrieval with the Cypher Maniac at the top of the deck. So you can see how crucial some of these decisions can be. Yeah, and it's really difficult to know. I mean, you can't possibly know what you're yeah. going to draw. So, I mean, generally keeping as many options open as possible is the strategy you want to go for. Mahone will just have to pass Hedrick, breathing a sigh of relief. And this is a big opening. Hedrick has an opportunity here to jump ahead. If Mahone had gotten the double KO, that would have been extremely strong. But now Hedrick is going to get one Matang in play. Research discards the hand, looking for another Matang. Can easily dis, uh, retreat this active with the energy that he has now drawn. Also has the Prime Catcher. I, Hedrick chose not to bench this Mew EX. Imagine if he had benched it with the Prime oh. Catcher. He could have copied Radiant Greninja to knock out both Frigibacks, assuming he finds enough energy through Metal Maker, so I'm really puzzled by that choice. Yeah, I mean, I think the bench management maybe gets a little awkward. He probably, well, I mean, he can't put another Beldum in play there in the prize cards, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. I mean, you want to work in the Zamazenta most likely at some point, but you've got room for Zamazenta and the Mew EX. Well, the thing is, as you were mentioning, for Andrew Mahone, he went for the potential game-winning play, right? That Mew EX copying the Greninja was also a game-winning play, right? You eliminate the Frigivax. There's no chance of retaliation from your opponent at that point. So that could prove to be a little costly here. Hedrick does have the knockout lined up. Already enough energy on this Dialga V-Star to use Metal Blast. There is another Matang in the hand. We will see one more Metal Maker looking at the top four cards here and attaching any Metal Energy found. It will be two Metal Energy cards being placed onto the bench. Origin form Dialga V. The other two cards will be shuffled and placed onto the bottom of the deck. Yep. 
Very correctly. Spreading out the energies, and now Andrew Hedrick will be the one to take the first two prize cards. Andrew Mahone had an opening last turn, but wasn't able to capitalize. The combination of cards just wasn't there. And now it's on Andrew to try and make, and it's on Mahone to make Hedrick whiff, but it's not looking great. His hand is a little cl too clogged up as well. Some updates from the floor. Grant Shin is up one game over Ian Robb, one game to none right now, and Dean Nazam as well has taken the first game over Eddie North. It appears Grant Manley and Nick Moffitt are still playing their first game. Andrew Mahone is going to kick things off with the Ultra Ball. After playing the Super Rod, this Ultra Ball will discard the Buddy Buddy Poffin and the Backscalibur. You only need one Backscalibur, but you only play two, so having one discarded uh, always feels a little sketchy, but with three Super Rod in the list, you've got plenty of playability there. And in favor of getting potentially the second Beaverell established, yes, that is what Mahone will choose. We've got a pair of Beavers building a dam on the bench. <laughs> a pair of Beavers indeed, Chip. Now you have to wonder what the play here is going to be. Is it Chen Pao knockout the Dialga on the active? Perhaps Iron Hands take down a Metang and hopefully uh, deny the Star Chronos as well as deny the energy acceleration can really go either way right here. Yeah, Iron Hands does seem pretty tempting. It would be a little difficult for Andrew to respond to it. With this Cypher Maniac's code breaking, Mahone can set up any two cards he'd like on the top, will immediately draw into them with the Industrious Incisors. I wonder maybe if Mahone should have gone for the Pokestop first, or mm -hmm. if he'll go for Pokestop now. You could go for the Pokestop first, see what you get, and then go for the Cypher Maniac. I guess the risk there is that you would have too many cards in your hand and then wouldn't be able to use the Cypher Maniac. Again, really difficult to know when the correct sequence uh, is the move, what correct sequence is the move here with Chi and Pao. Well, it seems like we're going to go with the Industrious Incisors not wanting to discard that extra card, which is another super odd clogging up the hand chip. These draws have not been kind to Andrew Mahone. Super Rod is such an important card for this deck. You need to play multiple of them. That's why we see three be so popular right now in Chien Pao lists. You just don't want to find them all this early. Mahone is going to be forced to play the second one here, placing back just one back Scalibur into the deck. Not the use you want to have. And I mean, with three Super Rod, this is quite fine. And I think it's one of the reasons why uh, these lists are now playing three as opposed to two from the past. But we're going to see the backup Beaverell. And Andrew Mahone draws the Prime Catcher, draws Superior and Retrieval. Can he find an attacker? No attacker unless he wants to go in with the Iron <laughs> Bundle. I don't think that's going to be the move. And I think we're going to see Superior Energy Retrieval discard the Prime Catcher. No, not before a Pokestop is used. Rare Candy, Chien Pao, and Irida going to the discard pile. Only Rare Candy will be added to the hand. Now, Mahon had the Irida last turn. What did he grab for the item card? Because he had to get the Rare Candy this turn. So what happened there? Yeah, I think he got the Ultra Ball prepping for the second Beaverell, is that yeah, right? I think so. Oh, we still have concealed cards. Hold on. Concealed cards. Pokestop. Cypher Maniac. No attackers found. It looks like it's going to be Greninja here swinging for Mahone. Yeah, so we're going to try to go after the double Metang perhaps right here, but it's a turn too late, Chip. This is why we wanted to see the previous turn. Wasn't able to find the pieces on the previous turn. Has to settle for it now. And it will be over the course of two turns that Moonlight Shuriken will deal with these Pokemon. But honestly, at this point, Hedrick will have had two full turns of two Metal Makers. Sure, Mahone can go for the Moonlight Shuriken next turn with the Super Odd and potentially take those Pokemon both out. But Hedrick is hoping that he'll be able to get plenty of energy cards in play before that's a concern. Yeah, and uh, now imagine if... Hedrick can piece out. He does have the Prime Catcher right now. If he can piece out a Star Chronos KO into a Boss KO on the Frigibacks, he's yep. going to deny anything that Andrew Mahone could possibly do during his next turn. So I think if you're Andrew Hedrick, that's what you're aiming for right here. Yeah, and, very, and I walked by their game earlier in round 12 today, and Mahone, definitely aware of that being a possibility, had 
three Frigibacks in play, the, uh, two Frigibacks and one back Scalibur, I should say, playing around the potential of Stark Kronos totally clearing his board. It was on something he's unable to do now in this game with a Frigibacks being prized. We do see Super Odd from Andrew Hedrick shuffling back two Metal Energies from the discard pile into the deck, increasing the odds for this Metal Maker hit. There will be a pair of Metal Makers raining energy into play is the hope here for Hedrick. You need one energy pair Metal Maker. That doesn't seem like a big ask. Would you say, like, you have so many energies yeah, left totally in the deck? Yeah, totally reasonable. You have one in your hand. Does play the Prime Catcher before committing the Metal Maker, so probably eyeing up the research before the Metal Maker. Not committing the attachment either, which yeah, I yeah. think would have been a big <laughs> mistake right there. Can't forget that, Mr. Hedrick. <laughs> they will go for it, attaching to the active. And he agrees with you, Pablo, that this does not feel like a big ask, that he feels like it is very reasonable that he would pull this off because he's going for the research first and only found one energy card actually found a nest ball as well yeah. to thin one more card out probably grabbing the Zamazenta maybe Radiant Greninja here and also has the boss's orders in hand as well so he can't do the double knockout to completely deny back Excalibur and leave Andrew Mahone completely toothless in this match I think we might see game one wrap up very soon as long as these metal makers are not even good, just average, yeah. right? Or even, you don't even, like, it's less One out than of average. four. One out of four twice in a row. Or, you know what, why not just hit both on the very first Metal Maker? Here we go. Four cards being found. There Two they energies. are. Two energies being hit for Mr. Hedrick here. And I have to wonder, after the Star Chronos turn, after the boss's orders, will Mahone yep. concede? He's not even going to wait it out. Andrew Hone says, let's move to game number two, and Hedrick gets the win in game one. Now, that's what we need to see more often happen in Swiss rounds. Yes. Recognize that your opponent is too far ahead, move on to the next game. There was no more chance there. Even if they don't have the boss next turn, you're too far behind at that point. And Andrew Mahone so close to having yeah. essentially the reverse, right? Having that double knockout on the Beldum, completely denying the Metal Makers. That's what he was hoping for, especially after going first. He almost had it in his hand, but the timely Iono by Hedrick and the unfortunate uh, draws from the Beebrel, the Greninja, and the Pokestop denied Andrew Mahone his two prize KO on turn one. Now we do have extra time here for top eight. 75 minutes of Swiss allotted now, or not Swiss, 75 minutes on the timer allotted for these top cut games. But Andrew Mahone says, let's not waste any time. Let's get to this next game, make sure that if we have a long game number two, that we don't even have to worry about it for game three. And things were so close for Mahone in game number one. Just could not pull off the turn two Moonlight Shuriken. And Hedrick was able to capitalize, got a couple of solid metal makers off, established a really strong board, and was eventually just going to be too far ahead after the star Kronos takes out Backscalibur. Yeah, and this is something we weren't able to see Andrew Hedrick produce against Eddie North, right, when he faced down this exact same matchup. He was never able to have two Dialga V star or Dialga V in play at any moment. He barely had one Metang going throughout the course of the game, but I think under more normal circumstances, the metal weakness and the star Kronos is very powerful for Chien Pao to deal with. Here we go, game number two, about to get underway. Players shuffling up. Andrew Mahone will be going first in this second game, something we've talked about a little bit being a big deal in this matchup. Both of these decks really, really wanting to have the first turn. Yeah, going first, so crucial for both players. One to snipe the Beldums, the other to evolve and protect the Beldums. Andrew Mahone will have another opportunity to snipe them before they become Metangs. But as we've seen before, yeah, Chen Pao Excalibur is a combo based deck and a setup based deck. And sometimes just the cards do not fall into place as you would like them to. Looks like Hedrick will be having a mulligan here. No basic Pokemon in his opening hand means he has to shuffle that seven card hand back into the deck and try again. Try to get a basic Pokemon. You must have a basic to start a game of the Pokemon TCG. As a reward, Andrew Mahone will get one additional card to work with, which is really nice for a slower setup based deck in the early turns like Chien Pao. Yeah, any extra cards are very welcome additions as we're gonna see finally the Beldum hit 
the boards. We're gonna get this game two started. Mahone going first. Let's see if he can piece out that Radiant Greninja play a little bit sooner this time. Oh no, two Frigibacks Ooh. in the prize cards for Andrew Mahone, along with a Baxcalibur, and then two Matang in the prize cards for Andrew Hedrick, and an Origin Form Dialga V. Two out of four is not terrible, but two out of three is really bad, and I think this is going to be immediately revealed to Andrew Hedrick. Yep, Mahone not being shy about the fact that his two fridge backs are prized. Yeah, make a note of that immediately. It's going to look really funny when this Buddy Buddy Poffin gets just one singular Pokemon. I think the other Badoof is already in the hand. <laughs> yeah, that feels... Oh, no, here it is. Very, oh, there it is. Yeah, and this is where the difference between Battle VIP Pass and Buddy Buddy Poffin continues to show up. Buddy Buddy Poffin, a very good card throughout the rest of the game, but this is where you wish you could get Radiant Greninja or Chen Pao itself to start thinning the deck or drawing cards as well. Andrew Mahone does play that Hisuian Heavy Ball. That is certainly something he will be aiming to find as soon as possible. It's Operation Find the Frigibacks. <laughs> Andrew Mahone leading the way. We'll see if he can uh, come out on top in that mission. For now, it will be a pass over to Andrew Hedrick, having the Beldum in the active spot. Mahone did not have the strongest of turns. No Radiant Greninja in play, no cards drawn, no energy attached at all. We'll see what Hedrick does with this knowledge. He's going to kick things off with the Nest Ball, immediately searching the deck for any basic Pokemon to put directly onto the bench, not before taking some time to check the prize cards. I think even if Mahone hadn't reacted to the two Frigibacks being prized, someone as experienced as Hedrick will immediately know, right, that something's up and that there aren't any extra Frigibacks available. There's no realistic reason not to get that free backs here unless you're well, holding like double Beeberald in hand yeah. but if you're still hand, questionable yeah if, if uh, especially if Mahone didn't have the strongest of turn I don't think it, you can assume that double free backs is prized immediately because double Beeberald turn two is so good yeah with Chi and Pao yeah. uh, especially when you're trying to dig for a strong play like uh, Moonlight Shuriken on a couple of Beldum but yeah definitely next the turn <laughs> yeah and the, the reaction as well from Mahone if Hedrick was being privy to that he will be aware that Mahoon is not pumped about yep. what he found off that buddy, buddy <laughs> Poffin. And now we're going to see Andrew Hedrick check his prizes very thoroughly and probably establish the origin form Dialga here to start off the game. No, just going to go ahead and go for the second Beldum. I guess next turn is when it's the least likely that Andrew Mahone will be able to take down two Beldums, right? The more time that passes, the more yeah. setup that Andrew Mahone yeah. is the more likely is that that will happen. So going for the double or even triple Beldum here is ideal. Yeah, and I will be interested to see what is going to be the grab for Hedrick. Will it be the Beldum to make sure you keep an extra one in play or the Dialga to make sure you establish your potential attacker? Looks like the answer for now is that Origin Form Dialga V, the crowd cheering to see it come into play. <laughs> and Iono incoming, I believe, is the supporter for Andrew Hedrick. Yeah, the crowd going wild over that Dialga hitting the field. Unbelievable play by Andrew Hedrick, still celebrating that shuffle style as well. <laughs> People very impressed with Andrew Hedrick at yes. this point. Yes, obviously we've got another tournament happening over on the <laughs> other stage. VG popping off. I think they're finishing things up over on that broadcast. But over here, we're getting through our top eight. Andrew Hedrick finds the Iona. We'll shuffle the pretty large hand for Andrew Mahone down to the bottom after some mulligans were taken. And six cards apiece for these players in the early stages of the game. Just another update from the floor. It looks like Grant Manley has gotten the win in game number one over Nick Moffitt. That is going to be Control versus Chien Pao being played out there on the field going into their game number two. Speaking of game number twos, Andrew Hedrick here on his first turn in game two using the Nest Ball. Could go with the Greninja here. Try to get a little bit of extra draw power rolling with concealed cards. Did also have the option to get a Beldum, though. Did have that option, Chip. However, he didn't have much else to work with. Does have a Poke Gear, which is not guaranteed. Does have a few energies, which will get him extra draw power. So I think going for that and finds an Ernest will to potentially get that third Beldum or second Dialga. There is merit to both. I think I like the third Beldum much more, but Operation Frigibax is a success <laughs> for Andrew Mahone. Does have that Hisuian Heavy Ball in his hand right now, which will be a big sigh of relief for him. 
He'll be able to find that next turn. Hedrick will put one more Beldum into play, ensuring at least one Metal Maker will be potentially on the table next turn. And still has an energy to attach. I think the question here for Hedrick is, do you go for the Magnetic Lift, or do you get an energy attachment to your Dialga? And I think now with the research being found off this Pokegear, the answer is going to be attached to Dialga. I actually really like the Beldum. Oh, yeah? Just guarantee a Metang, guarantee your setup, because realistically, you only need one energy off of Metal Maker to knock out the potential incoming Chen Pao, right? So with the supporter already guaranteed, and that's the only reason why you would play the Pokegear before your turn ends, I would say. Uh, if you find a supporter, you know you, can, you have a free card, essentially, with a Magnetic Lift. If you don't find a supporter, then you're putting that research at the top. And that is what Hedrick is going to go for. Magnetic Lift, searching the deck for any one card and then placing it on the top of the deck. He will be guaranteed to draw it to start his next turn. And now the draw for turn from Andrew Mahone will be a basic water energy. And yes, Operation Find Frigibax underway, and it will be a success. <laughs> now, unfortunately, it does come at the cost of two Iridas and I think two Rare Candies at the bottom of the deck after that Iono. So we have two Frigibax, but we might not have a Backscalibur or a Knockout happening this turn. I'm not sure what else is in Andrew Mahone's hand at this point in time. Uh, there is a Buddy Buddy Puffin, there is a Safer Maniac, but there isn't much yeah. else, Chip. I don't think there's a way for Andrew to interact with the cards from Cypher Maniac. There's no Pokestop, no Radiant Greninja, no Nest Ball to get one of those Pokemon. And it will just be a fail of the Buddy Buddy Puffin. A use of the Hyper Blower on Iron Bundle, a desperation play, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, Andrew Hedrick doesn't know how weak Andrew Mahone's hand is, so he needs to prepare for the worst rather than the best case scenario. If he knew what was going on, he would just promote the Dialga, knowing it's safe. But he doesn't have that piece of information. Seems like he's not even going to risk a single Beldum, get KO'd by the Chien Pao, just going to go for that Greninja, and he's going to be very pleased after he sees these top two cards get set and a pass onto his turn. So when you don't have much to work with in your hand as Chien Pao in this situation like Andrew Mahone finds himself in, what is the best two cards to put on top of your deck? I believe he chose B Barrel and Ultra Ball, which leads into... No, Irida and Ultra Ball. Okay. I was thinking... B-Brawl and Ultra Wall seems like the best combination. You get your B-Brawl, then you draw your Ultra Wall, you Ultra Wall for the second B-Brawl, and then you can get a fresh set of cards. He's choosing Irida and B-Brawl. There's also merit to that. Will guarantee rare candy backs caliber, plus the energies from the Chien Pao. Might get him closer to a KO, but a big thing is there's only access to two energies next turn. There aren't any in the discard pile, so getting a five energy KO on a Dialga V-Star is going to be pretty much impossible for Mahone next turn. It's already looking a little difficult for Andrew Mahone. Could also retreat this Frigibax value, protecting this, especially with one in the prize cards, but does the potential of setting up double Bibarel next turn outweigh that? And I think the answer for Mahone here is yes. <laughs> and even Mahone saying, yeah, this is not great for me, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Top decking that Metang that he put there with Magnetic Lift. Going to replenish the deck off the Metal Energies with the Super Rod. Going to have a straightforward, re clean research for seven here, Chip. And Andrew Hedrick about to become in a, about to be in a very dominant position in this game. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be jumping pretty far ahead here. I think the only other thing he would like to find would be another origin form Dialga V. I mean, obviously he has to power up the Dialga V yeah. star, but with a research incoming, with an energy to attach for turn, with the Matang already set up, I feel like there's pretty good odds of that happening. Yeah, you need to majorly with no, no extra Matangs, and then the Matang Metal Maker would also need to not find any energy whatsoever. We do see an Ultra Ball to establish the backup origin form Dialga V, and see the concealed cards as well in case you draw one then you can control oh. for Metang. Hold on here. It's not a guaranteed hit. Yeah. Hedrick also may at this point go f I mean do you go for the Dialga V or do you go for the Metang is the question because your one Metang is not guaranteed to find you an energy card. <laughs> it's kind of a tough spot. You want to thin a card out of the deck but 
Yeah. I think Andrew's going to go think. with the Metal Maker first. If he exactly. gets an energy card, yep. he can then go safely get to the Dialga V. Exactly. I really wish he would do this Metal Maker first because then that tells you, that gives you information on what you should search for. There's the energy, two of them, in fact. So I really think that Ultra will now be dedicated to a backup Dialga. Yeah, we'll have to see if Andrew does decide to go for that and what he decides to discard. He's really not valuing the Mew EX in this particular matchup, which is understandable. Now he even has an extra Beldum that he can get rid of. I think he's also trying to decide what to troll for because there is merit to going for the Metang so that there are no longer sure. two Beldums in the bench. Protecting the concealed cards play being uh, online for Mahone, or the uh, Moonlight Shuriken play being yeah. online for Mahone. <laughs> now, he does actually have this other Beldum as well. Debating that being the discard choice, it will actually be the Iono hitting the discard pile. And let's see it. Is it Matang? Is it Dialga? Which does Andrew Hedrick go for? I'm going to say the Matang. Yeah, after thinking about it, the chances of Dialga V-Star getting taken down next turn are so low, but because it requires five energies. The Reading Greninja play requires three, right? Along with one to, to retreat. But and if the Dialga was to be KO'd, Hedrick could try to attack with the Zamazenta, right? There's yeah, that strong yeah. basic Pokemon attacking option that he could go for. Um, and this ensures that there's no way for Mahone to take two prize cards on two Beldums this turn. If he wants to take two prize cards, it'll have to be going through the Origin Form Dialga V-Star. Now, there was a universe where this Metal Maker hit three energies, and then you could star Chronos and be completely fine. Of course, that is not the case, and Hedrick will be content with just taking a knockout on this single Frigibax. He also knows that there's another Frigibax in the prize cards, right? So this is the only one that Mahone has access to at this point in time. Andrew Hedrick jumping ahead in the prize trade, taking a knockout on Frigibax. Mahone immediately evolving the Bibarel that he put on top of the deck. We see the attachment to the active Chien Pao, and now Industrious Incisors finds that Irida that was placed there as well last turn from Cypher Maniac. That's one energy. Short Chip did find one energy. Can Shiver Chill for two, but that's not enough to knock out the Dialga V-Star so, so close. And then you have to wonder, will Andrew Mahone potentially Irida for Backscalor and Ultra Ball and try to piece out this KO? I think if you're trying to come back into this game and win it, it might be what you have to do at this point. He also could use Irida to get Radiant Greninja yeah. or Irida to get Ultra Ball for second Bibarel. You know, use one of those yeah, yeah. as ways to draw more cards. That may be what he has to go for here. He already has lined up the play to super odd back the Frigibacks, but he poffing it into play. Yeah, I think that's the best course of action, right? With what you have, you can't piece it out. So. Might as well draw as many cards as you can, and that's the Greninja and the Ultra Ball being put to the front chip. I think that's what we're about to see. Update from the floor. It does look like Dean Nizam was able to take down Eddie North 2-0. Dean Nizam with his Lost Box deck able to take down the Chien Pao from Eddie North in our first completed top eight game. Andrew Mahone will Ultra Ball away a pair of basic water energy. Does have superior energy retrieval in hand, so this works out just fine. We do see that B Rail being put into play, that Buddy Buddy Poffin. Who did he not? I don't think he played the Super Odd first. He did not play the Super Odd first, oh, so will Andrew. not be getting that Freaky backs. I don't think there's any targets, right? Yeah, I think that's a, a bit Small of a misstep. misstep. Man, that feels really bad. Yeah, the frustration might be getting to Andrew at this point. There's no reason to do it this way, so hopefully he can be a little more careful with the following choices. And, I mean, if he gets a back Excalibur going and gets a KO, that'll be pretty good, but now he might be He also be needs vulnerable. a Frigibax, yep. too. Now That's he, an extra card he's he needs. He's forcing himself to potentially find one more card, otherwise it would open up some potential strong plays from Hedrick. Yeah, that's super odd. Miss sequence could be costly for Andrew Mahone. Big industrious incisors coming in here, Chip. It will be for three cards here. Cannot attach, no super cold set up just yet. 
Drawing some cards here. There is the... No. Nope. <laughs> yep, there's the Nest Ball to get down the Frigibacks. There's Ultra Ball to get back Scalibur. We're going to go with Concealed Cards first, however. Drawing two. Ooh, and he's unable blank. to find a Rare Candy. Just can't quite piece things together. And now he finds himself with a two prize Chin Powie X in the active spot. That's not even going to be able to attack this turn. Yep, and the Star Chronos is so close that will allow Andrew to get three prizes as well. And then the only way you deal with that Dialga V-Star is with a two-price Chan Pao. So as long as there is a backup Samazenta or a backup Dialga, it's going to get very tough for Andrew Mahone to come out of this one. Yeah, I think Andrew Mahone is kind of feeling the back up against the wall in this situation. I think he recognizes that it's not super ideal. He's going to play to his outs and try to figure out what he can possibly do, but it is definitely going to be quite the mountain to climb. Pass what? to Andrew Hedrick. Draw for turn is a metal energy. Looks like he'll kick it off with the concealed cards. We could see Star Kronos this turn. What even are the outs, Chip, at this point for Andrew Mahone? needs Hedrick to not get a single energy off of two Metal Makers. Now, these haven't been used even though they are uh, sideways. So just to clarify for the viewers that might be tuning in just now, the Metal Makers have not been used just yet. There is also an Iono to potentially use this turn, which would give Andrew Mahone a brand, new a brand new hand, but I don't think you're very concerned about that at this point in time. You just want to make sure you find the backup Dialga and you are good to go. Even the Dialga V could take a knockout on a Chen Pao yeah. thanks to weakness, so not yeah. even forced Sama to find Zinta, a V-Star. Like <laughs> yeah, so many so options. So many ways to make this happen. Hedrick's going to use the Iono here. This does put some Metal Energies back into the deck, so if he can draw a Nest Ball, Buddy Poffin, some way to shuffle the deck, that will mean that those are live hits off the incoming Metal Makers. Yep. And he wants to find a Nest Ball or Ultra Ball of some sort there anyway it is. to get the Dialga into play. Yep, can get rid of that Energy on the Buddy Poffin very easily, get that Dialga, and then shuffle the deck, as you mentioned, and with Triple Metal Maker. I don't know the odds, Chip. <laughs> I'm not a, a statistician, but I feel like your chances of not getting a single one have to be close to 0%. Yeah, but you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> there is always that small percent chance. There's so many different ways a deck of cards could be shuffled. Maybe all those metal energies find their way to the bottom. Let's see if Hedrick can hit just one. Not on Zero. this first metal maker. <laughs> Two more chances. That chance just increased a little <laughs> bit higher than 0% now. Here we go. And yeah, there there's is. that energy. Three, Three of, of them. <laughs> wow. And this is going to be a tough hill to climb. Andrew Mahone climbed a mountain at the World Championships this year in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> this one might be a more difficult one to summit. Yep, that is true, Chip. How do you even come back from this? Even getting an energy and choosing not to attach it, make sure that play there is no as play. Possible. Yeah, there is no way any of these Matangs get brought up to the active to be stalled. Andrew Hedrick playing this perfectly and taking advantage of... Andrew Mahone's poor start. Star Kronos, V-Star Power, Marker being flipped over, and Hedrick draws again. His second turn in a row. One of the most powerful effects in the history of the Pokemon TCG. There's a reason that this attack costs five energy cards, but it is the power of Matang that allows Hedrick to get there. Now we have the back of Dialga V-Star. I can't see how. I mean, six to one price comebacks have been made before, but how? Not, not I against do a board like this. A way. Nope. Feels like all but a formality at this point. The fact that this game is still being played out. I mean, can't blame Mahone for sticking it out. There's no downside to doing it. Yep. I mean, at this point, are you hoping for what? Like. No, <laughs> there's nothing. Some massive multi-prize penalty. Gameplay error. Yeah, yeah. massive gameplay like, error. 
the only thing that could possibly happen here, but Andrew Hedrick just using those metal makers, checking essentially his whole deck, not choosing to attach any of the energies, just making sure that he's going to have energies available to retreat and attack two more times to finish Andrew Mahone off. All right, so we see the knockout. Raiden Greninja going down. It's Frigibax against the world chip. Frigibax against the world. Frigibax putting the team on his back. Can he make it happen? Mahone is looking through the discard policy and maybe you're down too many energy cards. Maybe I could win with some prime catcher stalling plays. Mahone does play the Silene, so if he could go gust gust. But Hedrick has plenty of resources left. Mahone sees the writing on the wall, extends the hand, and Andrew Hedrick will move on to the top four here at Indianapolis. Now you have to wonder if Mahone had found either the Rare Candy or the yep. Superior Energy Jewel in that first game.